Hey guys, this is Amanda and welcome back to Fire Branch Farm. So I have a really exciting video today and it's about hatching eggs and how to hatch your own chicks at home. So what I'm going to do first is just show you how I set up my incubator and how I get my eggs in there because I actually started these this morning and I don't want to keep the lid off very long because I don't want them getting cold because they're already warm. So what I have here is some eggs that I had shipped and I'll go into more information here in a minute, but I just wanna show you kind of some things I do. I have two incubators that are the exact same. They are manually turned ones. They only hold like 12 to 14 eggs each. That's worked great for me. I don't hatch on a big scale by any means. So I enjoy turning them. There are ones you can get that you, uh, they will turn them for you. So this is how I have mine set up. Okay. And you can see that I've got some X's on all of these. And the reason I do that is to help me when I'm turning. I want to make sure I get a full turn on them. And if you're just guessing, you're not, you're not going to be able to tell how much you're actually turning the eggs. So I do an X on one side. And then I do uh, kind of an O on the other side. And this way I make sure I get a full turn every time I'm turning them. So what I did with my incubator, uh, I always disinfect mine after I use it. But also when I bring it out, I'll just wipe it down with um, some soap and water. Uh, I don't usually bleach it again because I, I bleach and do everything at the after I'm done with each hatch. And that's vital to clean it immediately after the hatch is done because it's it's messy and you don't want that stuff sitting in there. Uh, so I just gave it a quick wipe down with warm water, some soap, and that's that's it. And I just marked them, put them in. Now the top of this incubator um, has mine has a like a temperature gauge, but it's it's in um, Celsius actually because these were made in a different country, but. Um, let me go over temperature. Let me put the top back on here and then I'll show you what all that looks like just so these continue to get warm. Okay, so here's my incubator. You can see it's trying to go up to temp and it'll get there pretty fast. You can adjust it, you can set it. I have just set mine um, on the temperature that I want it and I le I've left it there for years. I just don't mess with it. So that's what it looks like. Uh, like I said, it's just a small incubator nothing fancy but I've had great hatches with them so they work for me what you want to do temp wise is for a forced air incubator you which is one with a fan you want to have your temp set at 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit if it is a still air incubator one without a fan no moving air inside you want it to be 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's really important to keep that temperature stable. You don't want it fluctuating. That's really bad for your eggs. So you, I only open it to turn. I turn them quickly. I put the lid right back on. I don't mess around with them. I don't let them drop to cool, get back to warm. Um, that's not going to help your hatch rate. So, um, also, some people have to worry about humidity. I don't. I never have. Just because we're pretty high humidity here all the time. And so I did used to have little um, little humidity readers that I had in there. But honestly, our humidity was high <laughs> all the time and it didn't really matter. Uh, I already And I got great hatches. So I just decided not to worry about it and I don't. They do recommend 40 to 50% humidity day one through day 18 and then day 18 on to up that humidity to like 70%. But we're usually up into the 50 plus anyway. So I don't worry about it. Um, if, you, if you do need to increase your humidity in there, mine in the center uh, has a little round um, bowl area in the middle. You can add water to it. Or you can add a um, damp paper towel, a damp sponge, and that will increase your humidity. Um, you don't want it too high because you don't want chicks to drown in their eggs and not be able to hatch, but then too low and it's too dry and they can't hatch. So, but again, I haven't, I haven't had much trouble and our humidity is fairly high uh, most of the time. So 
I just have left it alone and it seems to work for me. But those are some things you can do to kind of help that. Um, eggs, what, the, what they do is it's a 21 day incubation period for eggs. What I do is I set my eggs typically in the morning and that's kind of my day zero. The next day, kind of 24 hours after they've been in there, I will turn them for the first time the next morning. So I don't turn them that first day. I leave them in there, let them sit, let them settle. And then the next morning I start to turn and that's my day one. And I turn three times a day. Um, again, I turn manually and I do it when I first get up, when I get home from work, and then again, right before bed. And that's kind of the minimum. You're supposed to turn at least three times. I have missed some here and there, but again, I still have good hatch rates, but try to get them at least three times a day. And what I do, you know, with my little markers really helps. You need to be able to get a full turn. So I do that. And day 18 is kind of where I stop turning. So when I get to day 18, I'll turn maybe once in the morning, maybe when I get home, usually it's just once in the morning. And then I don't turn anymore. And then that's considered the lockdown period. And from day 18 to 21, which 21 is when they should start hatching, you don't, you don't turn, you don't open it unless, you know, maybe if you need to keep your, you're having problems with your humidity or something like that, but I don't open it. I, I just leave it down. And what I do is every day I go with a little flashlight along the side so I can get a really good look at the eggs with that bright light where I'm not having to open it. And what I'm looking for is the eggs to have, um, it's called a, it's called pip, when the chicks pip. And that's where they're actually hitting out the shell with their beak and they pop it, pop a little hole. You know, it's not usually a full hole. You'll see like crack and then you'll see like kind of a triangle, you know, where it's been, the egg shell has been pushed up. And that's called pipping. And when they pip, then their next step is they will zip. So pip and zip, but they'll use their beak and like a zipper, like you're opening a zipper and go along the egg. And then that way they can push out. So the first thing you're looking for is a little crack or a little hole, you know, or that where the eggshell has been pushed out. And I have gotten some as early as like day 19 started to pip. And that's pretty early, but once they do that, and then they should start cracking, you know, working their way down and unzipping the egg, basically. That can take up to 24 hours. Most of them within like five hours or so. Some are faster than others. Um, I personally have stopped helping chicks out of the egg. I don't do that anymore. I, I used to. And I don't think I had one that ended up not having something wrong with it. Either it came out and it was not right it died shortly after or it just failed to thrive and we lost it you know weeks later um so i've learned my lesson it's hard you want to get in there when you see one you're like oh, this is taking forever he shouldn't be still in there and you want to kind of help him i don't don't i don't know it doesn't it's never worked out for me i know some people probably have success stories but i just don't do it anymore also if you get in there and pull the eggshell too early off of them you can actually cause them to bleed to death because some of the um, the veins are still pumping blood. They're not closed off. And if you do that, you can actually cause them to bleed to death. So just leave them alone. Let them do their thing. Either kind of they get out or they don't. Um, so I what I do too is when the first one hatches, unless it's like super early, like those day 19s, I will leave it in there until it's fully dry and even sometimes 24 hours if I see some more pipping because I only want to open that you know as little as possible even when I'm pulling chicks out to take them to the brooder I don't want to just keep opening shutting lid because you, you can mess up um, the hatches for the rest of them that are in there you know you could mess up the temp and the humidity and cause problems so rule of thumb just after day 18 or even all the way through, just don't open it if you don't have to. Let them, just leave them alone. Um, but it's always really exciting when you get that first one. And usually the best hatches are where they kind of come all together. You know, it's easiest that way. But yeah, I just let them, I let them fully dry in there. And then I'll pull them out and hopefully in groups. So I think that's 
I think that's all I have in terms of hatching. Oh, let me talk a little bit about shipped eggs versus getting local or your own hen eggs. So shipped eggs, these that I set are shipped eggs and they came from Ohio. I'm in central Kansas. They shipped today. Um, we had a note, they held them at the post office. And then I picked them up and brought them home. And what I did last night when I got them home is I put them in an egg carton and I just let them settle. I, I left them sit there all night, didn't touch them. Because you want that air sac and everything to come back up. Hopefully everything inside settles because they can be really tossed around. Um, and unfortunately, you know, that's why you get you don't get the best hatching rates because it messes up. Sometimes they actually break the yolk and like scramble the insides if they've been really, really tossed around. Thankfully, when I got this box, it was really great shape. It didn't look banged up. It didn't look scuffed. So hopefully these had um, a gentle trip. But we'll see. I'm really excited about these eggs. Um, I can talk more about my chicken breeds and what I'm doing with them. We're actually getting some a new breed... Uh, in a few days we're gonna go pick them up and so I'll do a whole more chicken thing but so with shipped eggs let them sit they say at least six plus hours I usually will do it all night so you know when I pick them up the post office during the day it's usually at my lunch time and then when I get home you know they've still been jostled around because they have the car ride home and then we just I just let them sit for the whole night and then I put them in the incubator this morning I have not turned them until tonight so when I got home just now I finished marking them with the X's and the O's and I turned them one time. So tomorrow will be more like my day one. Um, I wouldn't have even turned them tonight, but since I was I hadn't marked them, I just I got up late this morning and just had to throw them in the incubator. So if I wouldn't have had to mark them, I probably wouldn't have turned them till the next morning. Just again, letting them settle, letting them get started, begin their thing and I don't, you know, want to open them too much either. So, so day one through 18, you turn at least three times. Day 18 on, however you want to split that, is locked down. And then you look for the pipping that you'll get. I usually quit them at day 24. We get to 24 if whatever's left in there, if nothing's pipping. And even if they pipped and they're really late like that, a lot of times they don't end up hatching. So... But 24 is when I'll unplug the incubator and I get rid of the eggs that remain. Some people look at them. I, I don't I don't really do that. Um, but it is kind of interesting because then you can kind of see if they quit developing at some point. If they just were never uh, fertilized, you know. I might do that this time and I might make a video of it. it might be interesting and a good way to learn too. So, um, but yeah, I think, I think that's it um, I don't clean the eggs before I put them in there you know I don't wipe them down or anything I've never really had really gross eggs I guess I don't know if you were to if you were to get one that had a whole bunch of poop or something on it maybe you'd want to wipe it off with a wet paper towel I don't know I don't I don't clean them so I just put them in um, if you're getting eggs like from your own hens or you're getting them local, you don't want eggs older than 10 days. 10 days kind of the cutoff that you want to try to set any um, for a successful hatch. So after 10 days, you know, they can still be eaten. It's not bad, but that's just kind of the rule of thumb. And that's what I do when I sell hatching eggs. Um, I make sure all my eggs are, you know, less than 10 days old. And if I'm shipping the eggs, I put that shipping time in there too. So I wouldn't collect through day 10 and then ship them. Um, I would collect through day like seven, one through seven, and then ship them. Something like that. So you just have to take into account that. Make sure you have really fresh eggs. Um, try to pick eggs that, you know, you want to hatch uh, based on color, size, maybe the hens, um, me, I have worked on body type or like phenotype of my chickens for the last five years, basically. I've lost a little bit of the egg color of my black copper morans. They're supposed to lay a dark, darker egg. And these are these are nice eggs. And, and I have some that are really nice myself too, but they could be darker. And so that's what I'm kind of focusing on this year. That's why I got these eggs shipped in because they're going to, um, they have some really dark genes that she's breeding. So I'm hoping to bring that into my own birds. So, all right. I think, I think that's it. If you have any questions, please comment. Um, let me know. I'd love to talk chickens and whatnot. If, um, if you have any 
suggestions or anything. Um, I, I'd like to do some more chicken videos for sure. But this, I think, is a really cool way, especially if you have kids. My kids love watching these chicks hatch and then watching them grow. So it's just kind of a neat experience. You kind of see the whole thing, you know, from the time you bring the egg in and development and then they're hatching and then you raise them and grow them and then you get eggs from them. So it's really cool. Um, another thing that I don't really do with my dark eggs, but you can candle eggs and that's taking a really bright light. Some people are like really high powered flashlight or they have candling lights and you put the egg on it and you can actually see inside of it. These dark eggs are really, really hard to candle. And I just have not invested in a really good light. I may do that though, because it's really neat. You can see the veins start to form. Um, then you can actually see the outline of the chick. And you do that because then you know that those are developing and you can pull out the eggs that aren't developing. So if you get to like day five and there's no veins, there's no nothing, that egg's probably not fertilized or not going to develop. And then usually you can wait a few more days, check again, and then at that point take those eggs out because you, you know, you don't need to keep waiting and wondering if that one's going to develop and going to hatch when it was never fertilized to begin with. So, okay. Leave, leave me some comments and um, subscribe. If you're enjoying these, I, I have tons of different ideals of content that I want to get out. And especially when the weather starts getting a little nicer, which we are, if it would just stop raining, but um, I am going to be doing some planting of carrots and stuff coming up. Um, we might be doing the wood chipper this weekend. Finally, we kind of got rained out last time. It's still a little cloudy. There's some chance of the rain, so we'll see. But all right. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you next time.